This is Earth four billion years ago. There is no oxygen in the air. Molten lava flowed into an already poisonous sea. Hard to imagine, but this harsh environment was perfect for nurturing a miracle. Rain washed the necessary chemicals from the air, and lightning and ultraviolet radiation cooked these chemicals into an organic soup. And somehow, when the smoke cleared, there was something new, something amazing. A very, very special molecule with a graceful spiral shape. And it had talent. It could make copies of itself faster than it could be destroyed. This was the origin of life on Earth. And when this molecule learned to protect itself inside cell walls, life began to transform the planet. Three and a half billion years ago, cells learned how to directly use the sun's energy in the process of photosynthesis. And life grew exponentially. The oceans teem with cyanobacteria and layers of these microorganisms mixed with sediments became the world's first living structures, stromatolites. For more than a billion years, these three-foot-high mounds mark the limits of life's progress. But more important than the mounds themselves was their waste, oxygen. These new gases, at first toxic to all life, gave rise to the ozone layer. Shielded for the first time from the sun's damaging ultraviolet rays, life became unstoppable. One and a half billion years ago, the cell developed an additional membrane to protect its genes, a nucleus. Now, life was so abundant that every drop of water teemed with organisms. 800 million years ago, the first multicellular organisms began to appear. For a while, multicellular animals just meant collections of identical cells. But gradually, these colonies began to have cells that were specialized for different purposes. The first multicellular animals that had specialized cells were sponges. Some of the cells pumped water, and some filtered out tiny bits of food. Anemones and their relatives had muscle cells and nerve cells. This enabled them to bend, stretch, and flex. But none of their great cell diversity enabled them to move. Staying put was a common trait back then. Six hundred million years ago, an ancient worm was the first animal to develop a centralized nervous system. It had nerve cells that ran the length of its body and a concentration of these cells at one end formed the first primitive brain. In fact, this was the first animal with a head. And light-sensitive cells in that head were the world's first eyes. It could recognize both the direction and intensity of light. Since it could both see and move, this worm interacted with the world in a very different way. For a hundred million years, sponges, anemones, and flatworms dominated the ocean. Then, all of a sudden, if you can call 30 million years sudden, a huge variety of creatures appeared. This event is called the Cambrian Explosion. Here is a stunningly developed marine worm. In the course of the Cambrian explosion, competition for food caused both predator and prey to become extremely sophisticated. This is the top predator of that period, a terrifically capable hunter. The Cambrian was a very dangerous time.
only slightly lower on the food chain, another deadly predator prowled the ocean depths. This one had five eyes on top of its head and a single extendable claw it used for hunting. Every animal group alive today had its origin in the Cambrian. The first fish appeared more than 500 million years ago, a predecessor to mankind's own group, the chordates. Fish quickly became a success story, getting faster and sleeker and far more numerous. They developed bony spines and, crucially, jaws with teeth. Four hundred million years ago, much of the earth was already covered in green. Plants had colonized fresh waters and spread onto land. Once they were established, animals soon followed. Centipedes were among the first land creatures. They developed simple lungs and skin that retained vital water. Scorpions, cousins of the horseshoe crab, also made an early move onto land. Their line of eight-legged predators has spread far and wide since then. While the invertebrates were the first animals ashore, others were not far behind. Fish penetrated wheat choke lagoons. Using limb-like fins, they pushed their way through the tangle to stalk their prey. Fins became more and more like legs. The vertebrates were on the verge of a breakthrough. The first amphibians emerged from the swamp some 370 million years ago. Their soft, moist skins absorbed oxygen, and simple lungs allowed them to breathe air. The exertion of hauling themselves over land required plenty of fuel. But the land was now crawling with life. The first flightless insects made easy prey. Many amphibians came to live on land because food was so plentiful. But they were forever confined to the damp places because of their delicate skins. Reptiles evolved from amphibians. But with tougher waterproof skins, they were able to occupy entirely new habitats. Reptiles also pioneered another breakthrough. Waterproof eggs. Now they could breed in dry places. Inside the eggs, developing young were housed in a miniature ocean. Reptiles were on the verge of global domination. But one thing held them back. With their skin now waterproof and airtight, breathing became a problem. Lizards breathe by expanding their chest, but because how they walk, they often have to hold their breath. Their waddling gait, inherited from ancestral fish, forces the chest to flex as they walk. Their lungs can expand to draw in air, and lizards easily become breathless. Ancient relatives of the crocodile, though, found a solution. By standing up on their legs, these reptiles began to walk tall and breathe easier.
270 million years ago. It is hot, and these ancient reptiles need plenty of water. Spending time at the river makes the herds nervous. They know this is a great place for an ambush. Fortunately, this top predator is not hunting. She has recently eaten and also has come to the river to drink. She is 18 feet long and has an armored back. She needs a huge amount of food and therefore needs to defend a very large territory. 